Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Mind Turtle. Uh, this episode, we won't be working on the rabbit farm, but I just want you to know that I've pretty much got it working. It, well, I mean, half of it. Of course, I just have to mirror it. Uh, the only part which will be kind of a problem is this part. This wiring will connect on both sides, but that doesn't actually matter. So it's alright. Um, but it's working now, so uh, that's cool. Uh, this, this is what took me a while to do, and it's the reason why we're not going to be showing off today is because there's still some work to be done. Uh, oh, am I stuck here? Okay. But I just want to show it off. Essentially, when the minecart goes over the track up there, it hits a detector rail, pushing this piston down, pushing down all these blocks. It's redstone block, it turns on this, which sends a one tick pulse through here, meaning this block is either out or in, it just sticks out or then in. And then that triggers this, which then pushes this forwards, which unpowers this for one tick, which makes this trap go boop, boop. Now you might be thinking, actually, that's very complicated just to make a one tick pulse, yeah? Because that's all it needs, it just needs a one tick pulse in here. But the reason why it's so difficult is all one tick pulses are pulses, you know, that are on for a t tick. I need it to be off for a tick, because this is how the trap door is, this is its on state. I just need it to be off for a tick, and that's really difficult to do because one tick pulses don't go through redstone torches, so you can't just invert it, you know. So uh, as I did, I did originally have this coming straight down and a pushing block touching this piston, which would make it tick one tick. Uh, the problem with that was that it would do it once when it went down and once for when the piston retracted, and that's what this does, is it makes it just a one thing, so this doesn't pulse twice. But essentially what that does there, is it lets a minecart through, and when if it's only a tick long, it only lets one minecart through, and... Like that, and then the rabbit breeds, drops its babies down, and it would go down there, except I don't fit, because I'm too big, so, so I'll simulate it, it drop down into here, and I'm gonna and take it all the way back up and back down. I'm pretty sure it's just a visual glitch. Like if we try attacking it, you see it's not here. It's actually here. This this thing like glitched out visually constantly, but it doesn't actually break. It just looks like it's broken. And then I want to take pulse and and drop it. Um, then you might be thinking, Ash, that's a very far drop. It would kill a rabbit. Yes. <laughs> that's all. It would kill a rabbit. No. But if you fill it with minecarts, then it won't. Because then it'll only drop one block at a time. Well, not even a full block, just a minecart height, which won't kill it. So you need this to actually be filled with minecarts for it to work. And right now, the minecart won't make it anywhere unless it has something in it, because you carry more men momentum. So when you fix that, put some more pa powered rails around. I just ran out of powered rails. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what it's going to look like. Just go mirror it on the other side. Um, these long pillars here could make ears. It could be some sort of bunny face. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that's enough for this episode. I just really wanted to show it off. I've been putting a ton of work into this. But there's not too much to really show for it. So I just wanted to show it off in detail. What we're going to be doing this episode is we're going to be building the thing that the thing that mirrors this. Actually, I don't have any food. Um, because, as you may or may not know, gosh darn it, egg. One, I left for one second. Okay. So for my entrance to my house, because you know this is all going to be part of my massive house and I'm going to have rooms between this and stuff um, yeah I'm not really sure how this is all going to work out it's going to look horrible and hideous but what can I say that's the kind of guy I am I love horrible and hideous no um so this is one tower and then I want to kind of like wrap, make another tower on the other side of the entrance and then you enter through the center you know, um, and I'm thinking a mob farm. 
So there's not going to be too much camera work, which is why I, I'm distracting you by talking about it. So I'm just going to be doing a bunch of off-camera stuff, but... Um, probably not going to finish this episode, but I'll probably finish it off-camera or something. So it'll probably be like this, you know, I start it, and then I slowly work on it as time goes. But we will be doing Etho's design, spiderless design, so we will need a spider spawner to get a string and spider eyes, but it will be a spiderless design. It just makes it simplified and better, really. Um, but what I'm thinking is we'll have a staircase walking up here, and it'll go up to this height here. And then that'll kind of be the main height for the entrance. And then like things like this is lower down. And there'll be other rooms. I don't really know how this is going. I I tried planning it. Planning doesn't work for me, so I'm just going to wing it. And in the worst case scenario, I'll just have a bunch of things over in this direction. <laughs> With no actual house. Anyway, I'll get started. And I'll show you the process to make each level. Oh, and just a warning to the coal man in case he comes back on. This is now the beacon. I removed it because we didn't need it at the slime farm anymore. Oh, and we are one wither scale closer to doing the wither and a dragon fight. So, hope you're looking forward to that. And here we have it, the first layer of the mob system. Now as you can see, these half slabs... Actually, why are there half slabs in a mob system? That stops things from spawning. Yes, this stops spiders, because if you look in the center here... We don't have enough room for spiders. <coughs> Because they are too big and they cling to walls and they block systems up, they're just kind of annoying in general. Now I'm going to leave a link to Etho Slabs uh, tutorial on how to make this. Seeing as this is his mob farm design. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sick. Um, but I just want to let you know from from the center. This three, four, seven, eight, and then. Just kind of visualize it. He didn't exactly say the footprint, and neither am I. But, um, it's kind of this, and then you spawn it. Well, he'll show you how to build it, but, um, yeah. As, this is essentially it. He's got to build this, uh, like, eight times up. It's going to be quite tall. Quite tall indeed. Um, but yes, it means that we won't have any spiders spawning. This uses a ton of blocks, by the way. I had, like, th 12 stacks, and now it's my last four, so this is, like, 8 stacks of stone bricks. And, this. and that's just one layer. I'm going to have, like, 8 of them. Um, but yes, because this system won't spawn spiders, what we need to do is set up a spider spawning area. Now, that could be a cave spider, that could be a uh, normal spider. I, it could be either, depending on which one's easier to find. Um, am I doing this wrong? No, I'm doing this right. Of course, I'm doing it right. I never do anything wrong. But yeah, so next episode, if I don't get the rabbit farm working, we might try to work out some sort of spider spawner because spider spawners and rabbit spawners, spider spawners are easier. Um, if you're wondering why I'm not doing a rabbit uh, farm videos right now, it's because I've done a few, for one thing, and it's just very slow progress. Uh, I think all I have to do now is copy it to the other side, fill it with rabbits, and really just hope that it all works, because if it doesn't, um, yeah, if it doesn't, then I don't know what I'd do. Be sad. I'd leave it, I'd work on it until I got it, but, you know, I won't just be like, forget it, no rabbit farm, like, I want a rabbit farm, but I might have to put a hold on it, which is currently what I'm doing, just slowly working out the problems with it as I find them. So yeah, next episode, we'll do some spidering, uh, but yeah, this this episode will be spider-free, thanks to these house slabs. Uh, it's kind of a difficult choice. I wasn't sure whether to go with this design or the original mob farm design that uh, you know everyone uses the big square in the sky, four water streams pushing all the mobs to the center. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've watched my original Minecraft series, I built one in that. I don't know why. I 
no idea where I first saw it. I think it might have been in a skyblock world that I first saw it. Or something. I don't know. But it's just like a really basic mob farm. Uh, huge spawning, you know, big spawning pads, which means that they stand. So, uh, fun fact about mobs, right? When a mob spawns, if it's over 32 blocks away from you, or if it becomes the, the, over 32 blocks away from you, after a while, it'll just stop moving. Now, what that's allowed is you can make detection, player detection systems with like a cow surrounded by pressure plates, and as soon as someone gets within 32 blocks, it'll start moving. And then you're like, ah, there's a player here. Uh, but what that also means is if a mob spawns here, and it's really far away, which it will be because it will be up in the sky or something, um, and it doesn't fall into the water streams and get killed within a few seconds, it's going to be stuck on that pad, and it won't move, you know, it'll just get stuck there until it despawns. Um, which isn't too bad here, because, you know, they walk one block in any direction, and they pretty much fall into the water. But the other design of mine, it's just a huge, like it's a big pad like this, and they have to walk all the way to the over. And that's the reason why I went with this one, as much as I do like spiders in Minecraft, not in real life. As we all already know. So this is the distance apart. Um, it's kind of just a random distance. I made it, I made an odd number from the center of this thing. Um, so if you look at it, all these trees have, have to be game with trees. I wish I still had my efficiency 5 diamond axe, it was so nice. So if you look at it, that'll kind of be what it looks like. I'll add an outer shell probably on all, uh, both of these, which is why I gave it quite a bit of room, just to make sure that it fit. Um, so then, if you can imagine with me, imagine rabbit. A big staircase coming up here, and a big staircase coming up here, maybe wrapping around the front, and some sort of like fountain fixture in the front, and then a grand opening there. Wouldn't that be great? I wish I could build, and then I'd be more confident, but right now I'm just trying to plan it so that once I get everything in, I can just throw everything together and get it all working, hopefully. This, uh, by the way, is working wonders. Um, it would be going better if it wasn't for the fact that I keep stealing sugarcane and eggs and stuff. So, I've got mostly pumpkins. Even though it looks like I've got mostly eggs, I've got mostly pumpkins. Almost half, full number, well, probably half the pumpkins I can get in there. Just because I haven't been using pumpkins for everything, but I've been using, like, eggs to get chickens for feathers. And then uh, sugarcane for paper, you know, just the usual. It's great. I can never run out of food unless I just forget to pick up food. That's just how it should be, guys. Guys, if you're watching this and you're on the server, just two of you, eat these pumpkins, they're great. Anyway, I'm going to get some more work done. I might get back to you. It might be the end of the episode. I'm just going to find out and check the length of the video. But either way, I'll see you soon. Well, guys, it's going to be a short episode, but I think I'm going to call it here. I'm not feeling too well. Oh. Rabbits are stupid. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't you do it too. <laughs> Don't. Oh my goodness. Look at all the rabbits oh. there. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yeah, this is going to be the episode. It's kind of going to be a short episode because I'm not feeling too well. You might be able to hear from my voice that my throat's not feeling too well. But yes, I'm going to call it here. Next episode, we'll do a spider farm or look at find a spider spawner. Um, I think there's one at Cape Ugo's house. Might actually just build it over there. I mean, not for practical reasons, but then she would have a spawner. And then it could be a reason to go visit her. <laughs> She's not too far away though. She's like, I'd say about a th five minute walk that way. Uh, so, you know, nice and close. And that way I'd be taking something away from the spawn chunks, which would help.
too much redstone and spore chunks causes that. Or the spore chunks over there. Anyway, after that though, at some point we're going to have to go get some wolves. I have a plan for untamed wolves and sheep. Should be interesting. I found some wolves off that way. Uh, I made a sheep farm. I'm not sure if I've ever shown you it, but I made a sheep farm. I was collecting wool to trade with villagers. And fun fact, I killed the she shepherd villager. It was glitching out and his trades weren't coming back. And it was only like two two emeralds for a piece of white wool. I was like, nah, you're dying, shepherd. Anyway, enough murderous stories and enough stupid rabbits. Don't you dare. Um, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye, guys. I know I said bye bye, but as soon as I stopped, he just jumped down. I almost had enough of this. Just kill all the rabbits. Come on. There we go. See, I wouldn't mind if they were trapped and I could laugh at them, but it's because they're so small. They get on through. Anyway, bye bye for real this time. Squidward has been alerted.